Welcome back to Robert Lloyd, where I show you the ins and outs of graphic design as it pertains to t-shirts, logos, and GIF animations. And today, people, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make a cinema graph in Photoshop. Okay, so now that we're in Photoshop, right off the bat, there's just a few things that I want to do real quick before I can move forward, which is... I just want to play through the video just to find out what's going on. Now, this video was a lot longer. It was maybe 10 seconds long. I cut it down to maybe two seconds and I just left a few out there so my workspace can just loop around without any problems at the end. And that's a very pro tip, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start a new layer. And when layer one, I'm just going to go ahead and hold Command, Alt, Shift, and E and that's going to make a composite shot now with this composite shot all i want to do is just keep the geese in position so i think i know what i want i'll just go ahead and make a layer mask and on this layer mask all i need to do is just brush away the water that i want to move so i want to go ahead and drop down my brush to zero hardness and the opacity i want to bring that back up to maybe 100 and i just want to go ahead and brush away in black just those small little areas right here and already this is looking kind of good so I think I like how this is flowing it's not exactly what I want because as you can see it's a cut like the edge jumps back and that's not good and also you can still see kind of a little ghosting just a little ghosting here in the uh, in the ducks or whatnot like you can see their heads kind of pop up these are geese they're not ducks they're geese but you can see the ghosting and all that stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and stop that and then with a white brush I'm just gonna go ahead and paint away the heads or whatnot of this because I don't want to see that that's not something that I want to see and then I'm gonna hit play again okay and this is looking good so I think this is doing all right now it's not the best thing in the world because it's still jumping and it's still doing that jump loop or whatnot I do need to go in and kind of fix that jump loop real quick because that's not what we want we're in a stream that's kind of you know looking good all the time so this is the way that you do this I'm gonna go in at the bottom layer and I really want to stretch this timeline out just a little bit and I know that it looks good right here so I'm gonna make a mental note that at this 20th frame right here before I get to the one second mark this is where I want to make my loop at so I'm gonna go ahead and command J this and with this I'm gonna move the command J back just a little bit and then I'm gonna take this portion and just kind of scale it down or just kind of drag it down to this frame and then I just want to go ahead and move over here to the 20th frame just pretty much cut that out I want to blade that and then I'm going to delete that now on the original video I just want to go ahead and hit a blade tool right there and I'm going to move that in right here and then I'm going to pretty much close this down so I'm going to scale this back down like so and then I'm going to I guess put this here like so like I feel like this looks good here what's gonna happen is that it's supposed to loop in a way that seems seamless we're gonna have that hard transition between this point and this point here as you can see it's gonna be a hard transition but to fix that out I have to do a little blending and stuff like that so this is what you will want to do you want to go in on this copy as soon as this start right here so you want to drag up until like right here to where this starts okay you want to go ahead and open up this drop down hit the opacity okay and then on this opacity layer you want to kind of scroll over to the ending of this kind of to the ending of this and just kind of bring the opacity down to zero all right and what's going to happen is as this is losing opacity the bottom layer which is the original layer is going to pretty much start all right basically you got to set it up in a way to where it starts itself over and over now that i got this done what i want to do is just kind of edit it out to make it look a little bit better i'm not a big fan of what the colors look like right now so what i'm going to do is just bring in a color balance and i'm going to make it yellow in the mid-tones bump up some reds and then on the highlight we'll bring in the same yellow and red and then in the shadows we'll bring in the blues and just turning that off and on you can see that the color kind of pops a different way or not i can actually like it like this so instead of using a curve layer i'm just going to use a contrast and brightness and just kind of darken the darks with the contrast now finally i'm just going to open up a hue saturation and just kind of play with that some so i feel like this blue is doing it i'm going to saturate it just a little bit more and that looks pretty suffice to me. 
Now just one more thing. I'm gonna open up another hue saturation. I'm gonna hit colorize this time, and I want to go to a yellow. And then I'm gonna hit Command I, and with that I'm gonna bring in a brush. Now this is stuff that you can't do on Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or anything like that, but you can do on Photoshop, which makes it pretty awesome. Which is you can just colorize in things that you would like. So this little stream right here, I want to make yellow, and I'll dial this back some. It's it's too powerful right now. But if I want to make it like this, to just kind of have like that morning sun kind of look. And I could do some other things like making the sky like bluer. And then I can bring in another blue. I can introduce another blue at the bottom. I could just do something like this and just kind of bring the opacity down on it. So it blends in better. And now that I got that, I'm pretty much set. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the space bar and let it, you know, render out and all that stuff just to see what it looks like. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Like it's doing some seamless stuff. So that looks nice. What I want to do now is just add text in the background. I think I want to just put in nature in the background. So I'm going to put that in and you can do that in Photoshop as well. So like I said, Photoshop is a powerful introduction into Premiere Pro. So if you guys are doing anything in Photoshop, just know that you want to update yourself into Premiere Pro. However, we're just making GIF loops or cinema graphs at this point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the space bar. And at the zero second mark, I'm just going to go ahead and type in nature. So this is looking good. And I'm just going to go ahead and export this out as a video file and then a GIF loop. So I can show you guys how to do that real quick so the video file is really for Instagram and stuff like that because we know we can't upload gifts to uh, Instagram yet I don't understand like Facebook lets you do it but you know video files are the only way that you can get a loop and gif on Instagram so with that being said I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and the only way that I know to do that is just to go over to the hamburgers hit the drop down and then go to render video so basically this is what you get whenever you render a video which is pretty much standard throughout all Adobe or whatnot. You want to just keep the document size at this document size, whatever it is, unless you're actually cropping. Just keep it at the document size. Here you can rename it, so I'm going to name it, and I'm going to go ahead and pretty much just select my folder. Now at this frame rate, I usually bump it up to 60, but I'm going to keep it at 30 just because that's what the actual video is in. It was actually at 29.97 frames per second, but... If we keep it at 30, it's, that's not that bad, all right? And then I want to do the work area, which is 0 to 41. Except instead of doing that, I want to do it to 0. I want to do it from 0 to 40. And everything looks good to me, so I'm going to go ahead and hit render. And we'll check our progress when it gets done. Now, to actually get the GIF loop, you guys, all you have to do is go to File, go to Export, Save for Web Legacy. Or Save for Web, depending on what you're using. It might just be Save for Web or Save for Web Legacy. So now that we're in save for web, I'm just going to go ahead and move this from PNG to GIF. Now because there's a bunch of gradients and stuff like that, there's some things to mention. Now because there's a lot of colors going on in this video, there's going to be problems and stuff like that because you can only get 256 colors in here and there's a bunch of shadows and stuff like that. So what I usually do is just, I turn on the dither to diffusion. I let it diffuse to 100%. And then from there, I'll drop the image size to 1080 by 620 and then don't forget to make sure that you let this animation loop forever now to actually test this out you just go down here and you hit the preview button and they'll preview it in the browser now with that being said you guys this is it so I hope you guys like this one I hope you guys can learn from it and use this technique to make your portraits or anything that you're in I know this is something that's not something that you just think of when you're out there but it's kind of motivated so anytime you're taking a, a maybe a picture at like a wedding or something like that or maybe you're taking a picture at a pond or something like that it's always cool to capture the background maybe this time when you're actually doing it you can actually take a video and have that as a clip that you also present to your clients and stuff like that i hope you learned a lot if you did give this a thumbs up if you're new to my channel you just kind of discovered me then go ahead and subscribe i do this all the time and if you have any questions leave it in the comment section below but with that being said let's go ahead and get up out of here so stay amazing stay creative but above all else stay awesome